there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com and today I would like to talk with you about homeschooling binge learning. Just what is it and how can it benefit you? So binge learning. Binge learning is really close to what a lot of us know as kind of a unit study kind of a thing. You can look up, you can Google unit study. And um, I think that the best way to describe binge learning is to talk about it in terms of real life. Because as adults, we tend to use binge learning whenever we have something big or momentous or important to do. Such as when we decided to move up here, um, where we're living now, we did everything we could to find everything we could about our move. We studied the area, we studied maps, we talked to real estate agents, we talked to people from the area, we uh, talked to movers, we calculated costs, we went on and we calculated mileage, how much gas it would be to just drive, and we, we actually took two separate trips up to check this area out first. Um, we checked out churches, we, we did everything we could. We kept notes, we kept lists, we, we did all kinds of stuff. We wrote letters, we wrote emails, we did all kinds of books, everything. Okay, so when we did that, what we did is we binge learned everything we could on our subject because we were doing it for a specific goal, right? And so that's kind of what binge learning looks like in homeschooling terms. Now, the other thing that we often associate this with is unit studies. Unit studies is a lot like binge learning. However, when you're doing a unit study, it's usually pre-planned. You have um, what you want to study and you have gathered all of your information. You, you know, made out your list of the little, um, like craft things you want to do or papers you want to write or anything else you want to do and you have it already laid out, right? So that as you take your children each day, you kind of have, you know, what you're going to do and everything like that. However, sometimes um, what happens with us is that everything in our lives, in our homeschooling lives, is so proscribed. In other words, you know, it's like it's already written in stone and every day you gotta do the same thing and you're filling up the math and then da, 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 da. and after a while you can get really burnt out and you're wondering you know I wanted to homeschool because I wanted I wanted to enjoy learning and I wanted my kids to enjoy, enjoy learning and yet here I am I'm just doing the same thing every day I'm just you know like we're just checking off the boxes and you know it's like it's like the difference between you know a factory where they bake cookies and then baking homemade homemade cookies right so you might it's really convenient to go to the store and have this package of cookies and you know that each cookie is going to be uniform it's going to taste the same it's going to look the same it's going to be you know but when you taste it, it it's pretty good I mean I like store-bought cookies but what is the difference when you take and you bake cookies you bake those oatmeal raisin or chocolate chip and you like you're forming the dough and you taste a little of the dough you know and you form it and you put it in the oven you can have that smell goes all through the house and then when the cookies are done and they're hot from the oven you know and you bite into that chocolate chip cookie and then the chocolate is still melty you can't get that from store-bought you know a ready-made package of cookies I mean maybe if you bought the dough and baked in the oven but um, you just can't you know they're uniform you know that's the difference between like the the kind of learning that's lock and step and check off the boxes and so that everybody will say that we're doing all the right things and on and on and like having like a homemade kind of learning and this is where binge learning comes in and you can't do it all the time you can't have a con con constant binge learning thing and expect your kids to have the basic skills I think I've tried that before <laughs> yeah so anyway but what you've got to do is you've got to make sure you've got the basics in. Okay, that's reading, writing, arithmetic, right? But binge learning, believe it or not, binge learning can take care of a lot of the science and the history and the geography and 
uh, the, the literature and the music and all those important skills, binge learning can really incorporate that but in a meaningful way to where you and your children are all learning together and you're enthused and you're happy. Okay. So along with that, let me let me explain to you what kind of skills. Okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of uh, one type of binge learning you can do. Binge learning usually starts either with a question or like a book you're reading or a movie you watched even. So one of my favorite ways to binge learn is to read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, especially for elementary age kids. And if you have like up to 10 or 12 year old children in your house and you have little ones too, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory will keep everybody enthused and busy for quite a while. Um, so what you do then is while you're reading your book or you're watching your movie or you, sometimes it just starts with a question you just have just because you're looking outside and there's bugs. <laughs> you say, Why do the, where do the bugs go in the winter time, right? Okay, so what you do is you're reading the book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you ask questions. You come up with questions, right? Okay, so Charlie and the, 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 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory will produce at least these three questions. There's probably a gazillion more, but these are three I just thought of. Okay, how is chocolate made? There's one. Who is Roald Dahl, who is the author of the book? And what is it about the children that we really dislike, right? Okay, so what you would do with these three questions when you're talking about how chocolate is made, well, of course, you're going to like find out about the cacao bean and where it grows and who discovers it. And you're going to learn about Montezuma and the Aztecs and you're going to go to cocoa houses. Mm. And you're going to learn about Hershey's and you're going to learn how they conch it and all these different kinds of things. And then you're going to have to like eat some chocolate. <laughs> You're going to have to like, you know, do chocolate molds and it's just going to take you in all kinds of different directions. Now these directions don't have to be like elaborately expensive and crazy and messy. But you know, you can have a lot of fun with this, right? So think about, uh, here's a note that who is Roald Dahl? Okay, so we look him up and we find out, well, he was a, was a pilot in World War II. Well, now we're off on a study of World War II maybe, of World War II bombers, World War II airplanes, now we're on to, now we're on to Hitler, now we're on to, you know, uh, Holocaust, we're on to everything and we're just going and going and going. It's just, it's crazy. Well, that's fun. Okay, that's binge learning. Another question, what was the third question? What is it about these kids that's so distasteful? I mean, like the glump guy and the, and the blueberry girl, you know, what, why don't we like these kids? Then we start talking about character. We start talking about selfishness. We start talking about the golden rule, what Jesus said. You know, um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And we talk about honoring your parents. And we talk about, you know, ch you know chastise your son while he's young. <laughs> and so we, we start pulling in even scripture into this and character, right? We start talking about character and children that have character and, and polite. And then we get manners. And we could talk about George Washington and his rules of civility or Emily Post. And what is a lady? What is a gentleman? And then we're off on a different direction. And how fun is that, right? Now we have a possibility when we're looking at this of we could throw in here, let's write about a, a really distasteful child and, and compared to a really really mannerly child. Then we're writing something, right? We can draw. We can draw different things. We can we can just, you know, we can, um, depending on the subject, you can listen to music or you can play music or anything else. And, and what you can do is to wrap it all up then, after you've read the book and you've gone through all this, then you can watch one of the movies. I like the older one better than the newer one, but it's up to you. And you can watch the movie and then you can pop popcorn in and eat chocolate and watch like the chocolate you put in molds or whatever. And you can watch movies and it's like, you know, you have a wrap up. That's where you have closure and then bam, you're done. And you like, hopefully you have like, I have actually, I've done Charlie and the Chocolate Factory a couple times with my kids. And we actually had made notebooks, you know, with all the different activities we decided to do drawings. And we made like we took tin foil and we tried to make golden tickets by, you know, kind of, um, uh, using like a pencil and drawing something and then and then using a highlighter on it to make it gold. I know. It's really a stretch, but it was cheap and it was fun. And then I stuck those in page protectors in this notebook. 
And so we've done stuff like that. That was a lot of fun. Well, that's one possibility, okay? Um, <clears throat> just think of what, when I, what I was talking to you about. These are the different disciplines that we pulled into that, okay? We pulled in reading. We were reading the book, and we had to read information about the things we were studying. Writing. I talked to you about how you can pull writing into that. Arithmetic. Well, arithmetic comes in lots of times when you're like, okay, so how long ago was that when they discovered that? So how much chocolate do we consume in the United States, right, per person? And then you're calculating that out. You know, that's arithmetic, right? History. Well, we talked about learning about World War II, the Aztecs, you know, when, uh, when was chocolate discovered, all that kind of stuff. Geography. Well, we're going to have to know where the Aztecs lived. Well, that's Mexico, right? And what about Roald Dahl? What about World War II? That's geography, right? Literature. I was just telling you, we were just reading the book, so that's good. Music. I don't know how music really played into that, unless, you know, they're, they're musicals, right? Both movies were musicals. Gotcha. Okay. Art. If you're drawing about anything, or you decide to do paintings about something, or anything like that. Like, and, and with the golden tickets, right? They were having to draw and make a golden ticket. Culture. We learned about all kinds of culture, right? We're learning about, like, if you study about chocolate, part of the culture in right after chocolate was discovered was to have cocoa houses and stuff like that. And then the culture of um, the Aztecs, that's cultural studies. Okay, scripture. Well, we talked about the character study of the kids and how it's, you know, it's like manners and the golden rule and everything like that and the character, of course, that was in that. So when, when you think about it, doing that binge study on just Charlie the Chocolate Factory, you've touched everything, you've had a great amount of fun. So I've done that over and over again. Um, one thing I would like to talk to you about is even scriptural, if you think about it, when you when you would take this type of a study and you're you're trying to pull a lot of things together and you're just kind of really enjoying yourself it's kind of like an all things principle and uh, this is a word the Lord gave to me like within the last month or a couple months ago it was he he showed me he he gives me these words right and he told me one day he said all things and I was thinking, all things. And so I see that phrase, all things, in all kinds of scriptures where I never saw it before. And basically, it's from Romans 8.28 is the original scripture that my mind thought of immediately. Uh, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8.28. And the whole idea behind this is that everything is connected. Why? Because there was one creator of the universe. And everything, you know, in Colossians 1, it talks about, let's see if I have that here. Uh, okay, here it is. <laughs> it's Colossians 1.16. Let me read this to you. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. So you see, everything in Christ, everything is connected. He is the creator, and did you know that he holds all things together by his word? Did you know that? You know, scientists don't know at the atomic level how things are stay together. They don't know. I know. It's the word of God. Because remember, God said, let there be light, right? So when he created the earth, it was because he said. So all these things that we want to study, you know, when we think of Romans 8.20, that he's working all things together for our good. That means every circumstance, every person, everything in our lives, if we love God, even the negative bad things, God is using that for good for us. You know, he's working all things for our good. And that's partly why I think binge learning is so natural to us, right? It just is just like we can feed on it. We just go in different directions. And don't be afraid to do this. Don't be afraid because you have to think of it. This is a, it's not really about the stuff you learn, although, you know, that could be really important too. And you can have a lot of fun. But what this is teaching your kids is to use binge learning in their lives if they want to know something, right? So they have a bicycle, and the bicycle breaks down. Well, they've got to find out about 
fixing the bicycle, and they might learn the history of bicycles, and they might learn about gears, and they might, you know what I'm saying? And this is just a natural thing that we all, it's a skill we all need to learn. And helping, like, I think a lot of the reason why young people, people that have been really, really institutionalized in the public school arena, um, there is a great difference between homeschoolers because public school kids have been taught that there's one way and one avenue that you have to go to learn everything. And if you step out of those bounds, you're in trouble. Remember in, in school, you know, I was in public school, and so they would give you coloring pages, and you were the good child if you could color within the lines. Well, I hated the lines, and I would find ways to get out of them all the time. <laughs> Look at my hair, okay? You understand what kind of person I am. But not everybody's like that. I mean, it's hard when you've been trained, don't draw the lines. It's hard to get out of those lines. You think, well, I have to teach my kids this and this and this and this and this in this order, or the world's going to just fly apart and everything's going to be bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, there are, there, if you watch my videos, I mean, you can go back and watch some, but basically, you got to get your skills, right? you got to get your kids doing their reading, they have to read well, they have to write well, and they have to know how to cipher or do arithmetic, basically. But beyond that, then you've got to put content in it. And, and there's something that none of that stuff teaches your kids, and that's enthusiasm. Kids, kids naturally should have enthusiasm for learning unless we kill it, right? But then sometimes even kids that are homeschooled, they don't really have that much enthusiasm, so we need to help them. We need to be enthusiastic. So I've got some pointers for you that while you're trying to do this, you're going to need to think of it because we live in a real world and it's really fun, Sherry. Yeah, like you like to have lots of fun, but I have little toddlers and I have somebody that's like, I have to turn in sheets and tell what we've done. I have to have a plan and on and on and on. And I get that. Okay, I live in a real world too. So um, here's some things that I suggest for you. Number one is while you're learning other stuff, make lists of questions or possibilities for binge learning. Number two, don't binge learn all the time, but choose times when you will do this. Like, let's say that um, some people do a sabbatical, like, you know, the Sabbath. They do like six weeks, take off the seventh, whatever. Or, you know, what, however you can do it, but make, but make sure that as you have done your basics, that you can have a time set aside. You might set, set aside one day a week to do binge learning. Or you could do, like I said, one week every six weeks. Or maybe summertime is your binge learn time. You just binge learn one thing after another. Whatever you want to do, just make sure that you're covering your basics and that your binge learning is kind of like your break. You know, it's kind of like your treat. You know, your kids are going to love it, right? Um, the other thing that I would suggest is that you um, record what you're doing after. Like, don't try to pre-plan where you're going to go that day because you might go in another direction, right? And then your plans are whatever. <laughs> if you're going to feel frustrated, you're going to go, I'm never going to do that again, right? So what you do is you do your fun stuff and then you record it. Now, I have something called the record book, and I kind of created this record book for this kind of learning. So um, it'll be really easy. And what it is, it has the categories like language, arts, Bible, and all that kind of stuff on the top. And then you put your activity here, and then you kind of check off, and then you put how many hours you spent, and then you count up the hours. Because a lot of us, either we have to do days or hours, you know, as an accountability to the government. And so, you know, you can just put it that way. So anyway, I have free sheets. I have free things you can download and you can use. But I also have books that are actually printed out. You don't have to worry about it. And they're available on, on Amazon. Okay? So I have links below for all that stuff already, below this video. All right, so um, the, those are some really good points. Okay, and here's one thing that's very important. Did I say this already? Hopefully I didn't. But pick subjects that you are interested in, right? Like, you know, I don't want to do a binge learning on pony puffs. I mean, seriously, uh, or, uh, you know, Ninja Turtles. Okay, I'm just not going to go there. But I can pick something that I'm currently interested in and something that they're interested in at the same time. I mean... I'm not going to expect them to want to know about lawn furniture, okay, but, you know, we can pick something that's, that we're all interested in and just go from there and just have a great time, okay? Um, 
build up enthusiasm, and this will help with the second one, is build up enthusiasm by your enthusiasm. Your kids are going to love it because you love it, right? Okay, even if at first they're like, oh, I don't know. well, did you know this? Did you know that? And you know what we could do? Then their eyes are getting wider. Then they're getting more excited. Yeah, they're with you. Okay, um, also, um, make sure while you're binge learning that every day you're still taking care of your basics. In other words, don't just pull yourself out of bed. You know, hey kids, you wanna, wanna do some learning? You know, I haven't brushed your teeth, washed your face, whatever, no. You know, get your house clean, brush your teeth, put some lipstick on, whatever you do. And, you know, make sure the kids are all fed, cleaned, and then have your fun. I mean, you know, you know, like a couple of hours, two or three hours in the middle of the day should be max. And then your kids can go play, do whatever they normally do, right? Okay, um, also, with that, um, don't push past the natural enthusiasm. In other words, you know... As, you know, any subject, you can get kind of tired of it, right? So once you all get tired of it, it's time to do a wrap-up, okay? Don't push past that because it'll just be drudgery. It's just like, why are, this isn't a break, right? So that's why I don't like to do the traditional unit study where we're planning everything out because I've done that in the past, and usually when we come to all the different activities, at the end, the kids are like, oh, uh, yeah, we're done now, right? <laughs> So just go ahead, and as soon as enthusiasm starts to wane, then go ahead. Say, okay, guys, then we're just going to stop here, and we're going to do a wrap-up. And what kind of wrap-up would we want to do? And you can pose it to them, or you can think in your own brain, because sometimes you have kids who bicker. Hmm. And so you want to make sure that Mama is in charge. <laughs> okay, so those are some very important things. Okay, and the wrap-up activity I already talked about. Okay. Now, also, another thing that you've got to think about is that you need not spend a lot of money. No, you don't. And you don't have to make a lot of mess either. You can choose things that are easy. Like if you think about the gold tickets that we made for the Willy Wonka thing. Okay, so it was tin foil and highlighters and a pencil. That's it, right? That's not expensive. Now, you want to keep stocked up in your house. It's just good in general for homeschooling. You want to have markers and color crayons and some watercolor paints and different kind of papers. You want to have glue sticks and you want to have different kinds of glue and tape. And you want to have all these things available to you. And if you use really cheap stuff, and you know, just like stuff around the house, just be really creative with what you have. You can even look on that. I mean, there's a gazillion things. Like if you want to study the Middle Ages or whatever you're doing, you can probably find a craft someplace about that, right? Am I right? We got the internet. And so you just use the internet. Another thing, too, is keep your shelves, like, you know, for Christmas or if you're garage sailing or if you're at the thrift store or if you have grandparents, you'll say, oh, well, we want to get you something for your homeschooling. Have a list of reference books you want, you know, like how things are made or maybe an old set of encyclopedias or, um, you know, um, Usborne books or, you know, Kingfisher or whatever it is or, or what is it, uh, Dorling Kindersley or whatever it is. Just have, like, shelves of these reference books, okay? And also, um, uh, master, is it Master Books? Master Books, I think, it, or or is it New Leaf Press? One of them has a whole bunch of like reference books, scientific reference books, historical reference books that are biblically based. And if you look online, you can find it. John Hudson Tyner, and there's all kinds of pieces. They, people they have like biblically based reference books, so that you're not like throwing a whole bunch of evolution and all this kind of other malarkey they're doing now. Uh, Wall Builders has a whole bunch of really good reference books. Uh, William Federer is another person that um, that has a whole bunch of historical reference books that are that are Christian. They're not, you know, the you know leftist Marxist baloney. And um, so there's all kinds of stuff that you can do and you can use. Just have them kind of stacked up in your house already. You know, like we have we have field guides for birds and for. Um, uh, plants and for trees in our area and you know stuff like that because and also bugs oh you can have bug books right especially have boys yeah so you gotta have your bug books and art art books and art supplies you know everything just kind of have be stocked up on these basic things also what some people have done which is a lot of fun is you can actually have clear like see the shelf behind me i could clear that shelf off right and i can make that our display for our current 
binge study, whatever it is, right? Like if we're studying birds, we could like put in birds' nests and drawings of birds and maybe molds of birds and whatever, you know, or like we could take the eggs, you know, you can get wooden eggs and like paint it like different birds eggs, right? And you can have it all in here, just like a display case, right? And so there's, oh, I mean, binge learning is so fun. So I hope this has given you some food for thought. I hope this like sets you free. Maybe you just really right now, oh, let me tell you something. Christmas is the best time to binge learn, okay? Because there's no way, especially the last two weeks before Christmas, there's no way you're going to keep your kids' minds on reading, writing, and arithmetic. Am I right? Yeah. So, um, what you gotta do is you gotta, you know, just start binging, like I described. Just start binging. Take a Christmas Carol, binge. Take um, a movie, binge. You know, just just let yourselves go in all different directions. Take, say, what is Christmas like in different countries? Binge on that. And a really cool wrap up for a Christmas binging is to create a family newsletter where everybody contributes something. Like it can be a poem about Christmas. It can be an essay on a Christmas in a different country. It can be a Christmas illustration, uh, like a Christmas card illustration. You can put that on the very front. Um, and Or you can tell a silly story about Christmas. We've had so much fun. We've done this in the past, and it is hilarious. And everybody's learning and everything, and it, it's just a lot of fun. You can you can put recipes in there of different things that you've tried that you really liked for Christmas cookies or Christmas goodies. Um, you can put a, a, a section on dieting afterwards. <laughs> Anyway, you can have a lot of fun with your kids. So I hope that you do. Okay, so you be blessed. Please like and subscribe. And I love your comments. Any comments you give, I just eat them up. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.